Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial on one of the, the biggest and coolest plugins in Logic Pro 10 and multi effects. So there's two things in here we've got step effects and fat effects. Today we are going to be going over the fat effects plugin. So inside the plugin, we've got several effects and then a few ways of controlling them, namely an envelope and two LFOs, and then we've got our master out. So the different effects that we have available are a bandpass, which is like an EQ. This has a few different modes that are just sort of different EQ algorithms to add a little bit of color to the sound. We can also control our EQ with an XY graph if we wanna get just a little more visual hands-on with controlling exactly what that EQ sounds like. Also got an EQ filter, which we can tie to these oscillators in this envelope as we'll get into later. Then we've got a distortion, and this has lots of different modes, which we're gonna go into a few of them. We've got ModFX, which is a modulation plugin. Think of it kind of like a tremolo or a warble or a wah sort of effect. A bass enhancer, which is sort of like a special EQ saturation thing that just kind of makes your bass sound thick and nice. And then we've got a compressor, which has all our different standard logic compressor types. And we can drag which order the effects get applied down here. So let's start to walk through these and talk about where we might use some of these uh, different effects within the plugin. So our first module is this band pass. So first, let's just go ahead and take a quick listen to our clean little bass line here. All our band pass is basically a high cut and a low cut. So we've got this low resonance and this high resonance if we wanna do a little bit of a bell-shaped curve on either end. And we can also do um, a little bit of reject, but I don't really like to play with this too much. I like to do just very simple, you know, if I wanna cut out some highs before we, before or after we go into something like one of these saturators or distortions, you know, just cut a little bit off. Just focus on those lows. Easy, we've got a few different modes here. Just changing the EQ algorithm. So next we've got this XY grid. By default, this is set to control the low and high cutoff of our band pass. However, we can also click in and get even more options. So if you wanna control any of the parameters that we're gonna go through, you can control them with this graph. If a sort of more visual, more tactile approach makes more sense to you, you can also control using this. We can do some EQ filter types of effects. So our filter is also another type of EQ plugin. We've got a cutoff, a resonance, a drive, and we've actually got our own mix for this filter plugin. Now here I wanna to start to talk about some of these controllers because by default, our LFOs are set to this filter cutoff and filter resonance. So if we turn on our LFOs, you can start to see all this movement. So we've got these blue circles and semicircles. This is gonna be the depth parameter and it's basically the range of our LFO. And so an LFO is an oscillator. That just means it's a wave that's moving back and forth. So you can think of these blue semicircles as a range and the oscillator is gonna move at a rate, which we can set with this knob, and basically turn this knob for us. Let's just let this play and play with it a little bit so you can sort of see what's going on. You can almost get a wah effect with this filter. Our second LFO is on our resonance. Set our first one to the drive. We can also just only include a little bit of the mix. A lot of flexibility to play around with these LFOs. Now the third controller 
is our envelope follower. So to help explain what an envelope is, I'm just gonna open Serum, because Serum has a pretty good graphical interface to help explain an envelope. So an envelope, in short, is attack, decay, sustain, and release. You're basically making a graph or a curve to show how a sound is going to evolve and change over time. So our attack is how long it takes to get to our peak. The decay is how long we're at that peak for. Sustain is how that peak decays over time. And then finally our release is how do we go from that decayed peak back down to zero once we let go. And so we have these same attack, release, and instead of sustain, sort of like a depth knob here. And instead of creating an envelope for an instrument, like in Serum, we're actually creating an envelope for these parameters. So let's turn off our LFOs, go back to our filter, set our envelope follower to cut off. So if we increase our depth, you can see the same blue semicircle starts to appear, but watch how our knob follows it with the envelope compared to the LFOs. The LFOs, we remember, were a constant rate, whereas our envelope follower follows this attack decay type of pattern with depth being our length. So our attack controls how fast this moves initially, our release controls how much it snaps back. So watch. With our envelope combined with our two LFOs, we can get a lot of interesting automated types of filtering and effects, and we can also apply these to different distortion and tremolo effects that we'll get into in just a second. So you can really get a lot of control out of this. That's enough about EQ, let's get to the fun stuff. Let's talk distortion. So we've got several different modes here. We'll walk you through a few of them, bit crush. Real staticky and messy sounding. Now this soft saturation mode is my personal favorite. I use this a lot on bass, especially before I got the Saturn plug-in. This was my kind of go-to saturator. It just sounds really thick and nice. Also got very drive. Nice and crunchy. Scream, it's like you're running through a guitar amp. Tube. And we can mix and match. Next we've got mod effects. So this is sort of like a chorus, a tremolo, a wah. This is gonna give us some vibrato. Let's set our mix all the way to 100 so we can hear it and we can set our rate. almost sounds like that TikTok vocal filter. Got a few different modes. And we can control this with one of our LFOs. So let's go to our mod FX rate. Not particularly pleasant sounding. I tend not to use this particular module very often. Next we've got our bass enhancer. So this one again, really good on basses. We've got warm, classic, and clip. I tend to just leave it on warm. It's almost like a Pultec type of effect. I like to stick it around either 60 or around 100 hertz. Go up to 100 hertz, should be able to hear this one a little more clearly on smaller speakers. Just a little bit of gentle, gentle EQ makes it a little bit thicker. Sounds really nice, especially when we pair it with some gentle saturation from our distortion. Now you also need a compressor to get that bass tone really kicking. We've got all the same great options that we've got in a stock Logic compressor. You can see all these buttons up here, Platinum, Studio VCA, Studio FET, Classic VCA, Vintage FET. Be sure to check out my full video on the Logic stock compressor to understand what all these different types of compressors do. They all basically have different amounts of color and different amounts of transparency in how they're compressing. Let's put something fun on here, like a Vintage FET, start to add a little bit more color to our saturated bass sound. And 
now we're grooving. That's all the effects. You can see we can get a ton of control with these controllers down at the bottom. We can rearrange things. We can move our band pass to the end and cut out any excess highs that might be created from some of the more extreme distortions. We can get very subtle bass improvements. We can get really extreme guitar tones. <laughs> This is a super versatile, super fun, really creative plugin that's super underrated. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to let me know down in the comments below if you're using this plugin and what some of your favorite underdog plugins in Logic are. Be sure to give the video a like, subscribe for more Logic Pro 10 and music production tutorials and videos. Leave any comments or questions down below. I'll try to get to every single one. And until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful morning, evening, night, whenever you may be watching this. Goodbye.